Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through disaster mitigation and preparedness. So if you watched the previous lectures, in one of our lectures, we discussed about disaster management cycle, right? So in that also, we discussed about disaster mitigation and preparedness, guys, if you recall. Okay, so basically disaster management, sorry, disaster mitigation and preparedness are nothing but the steps which are taken or which are done before the occurrence of a disaster and these things are used or done to avoid or to prevent the disaster guys in simple words you can say okay okay so basically this things which are the steps which are taken before the occurrence of disaster only guys that's the main thing that you should remember okay so the mitigation is divided into two types guys that is nothing but structural and non-structural guys we'll be discussing about that structural and non-structural in detail in our future lectures okay like around in in the one after the lectures like not the next lecture after that lecture we will be discussing about these points guys okay so in this lecture let me give you some introduction that's it okay so structural mitigation so from the name only you can say so here you are building some construction or you will be constructing something right so construction project which reduces the economic and social impact so it is going to reduce the things which you construct so basically the best example for this will be dams guys so when there is a flood dams could help to reduce the damages right so that comes under mitigation guys okay that comes under structural mitigation because you are constructing it similarly non-structural so non-structural is here is nothing but you will be maintaining some policies like if that happens if there is a if the crops or if the buildings have been collapsed we will be giving you a money or fund of this much so like that they will be saying right so in that way okay so that comes under the non-structural so basically those comes under policies of po policies or practices okay okay so if you take a small example so we will be knowing some kind of buildings or some kind of places are more prone to earthquakes right yes so if there is a chances of earthquakes these three are the most common things which are followed guys to reduce the chances of collapsing of buildings and all those things so in jammu kashmir and many other places where the earthquakes chances are high all the buildings will be constructed with these kind of things guys okay so even normal buildings will also be constructed with a few of these things okay okay so the first thing is nothing but cross bar cross bar bracing so basically here you will be using some steel beams guys so basically even when you are building some buildings also normal buildings also they will be using metal beams or steel beams guys okay Similarly, reinforced walls using the two steel beams is done. Okay. Similarly, shearing walls. So in walls also, they will be maintaining steel beams. So that even there will be no chance of collapsing or falling off of the building. So if this is whole is of a single steel beam or a long steel beam, which is a strongly intact, then there is a lesser chance that that building is going to collapse, right? Yes. So in that way. Okay. And similarly, at the bottom, they will be establishing some shock absorbers so if there is any kind of vibration that vibration will be absorbed by these kind of springs so in that way the building will not be affecting the things so basically when you take a building or when you buy a building we will be asking for earthing right so is there a chance of getting shock so basically that depends on earthing so in the same way here they will be maintaining some shock absorbers so here the ground or the or the terminal will be connected directly for there, right? Yes. So in the similar way here, the earthquake effect will be controlled or will be observed by there. Okay. So I hope everyone got some basic introduction about mitigation, right? Okay. So let us continue with some mitigation includes. So what does mitigation in concludes or it includes? So it includes reviewing building codes. Okay. So vulnerability analysis updates. Okay. Zone and land use management and planning okay public awareness okay implementation and preservation of health measures okay political and international communications so basically mitigation is nothing but i told you right so we discussed about mitigation so mitigation is nothing but you will be taking care of something like that should not happen the effect of that so effect here includes that like the number of deaths the number of disaster the number of loss the amount of loss and all those things should be less okay okay so disaster management mitigation and infrastructure so investment in infrastructure for reconstructing and suitable economic development so basically instead of reconstructing the whole building 
they will instead of uh, after occurrence of disaster reconstructing the building it is always better to pre-plan right so that comes under the mitigation guys okay and a backup generator so for power so if there is any kind of power issues or anything there should be some pack backup generator generators and everything right yes okay okay so i hope everyone got some basic idea about mitigation and preparedness right okay so in the next lecture we will be going through community based disaster risk management guys okay after that we will be going through some properties or components of structural and non structural mitigation okay okay so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching